Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming to Secrets to Apps and Game Success on Google Play. My name is Andreas Breuer. This is Brian Quimby. We both work on Google Play in business development and help game and app developers to be successful on the platform. So I guess I use this. Strong start, guys. Here we go. And you already know that. Perfect. There we go. So previously to Google Play, I worked on a team that helped game and app developers to get additional users. And so many app developers told me, hey, Andreas, I have a problem. Conversion tracking is difficult. And really getting a good understanding of where my users come from was a big deal and a big challenge, actually, for many app and game developers. So that could be. Any of the traffic sources could be YouTube, it could be Surge, it could be AdMob, any of the organic traffic sources. And it was really a challenge. So um, to overcome this challenge, we announced at I.O. a new tool, a new report that helps you getting a better understanding about your user acquisition channels. And so this is actually the report that you can see here. So you can follow now your users from the, store, the, the Play Store listing uh, to the install and to the purchase. And so this report is really beautiful to get the full understanding of your funnel. The great thing is you can even follow, uh, you can even follow your users to the next stage, which is actually the repeat purchasers. But that's not everything. Beyond the, beyond the, the funnel, you can actually also see the traffic sources. The traffic sources can be organic on Google Play, but it can be also beyond that, any third party traffic source that you have. And so you can drill down on the traffic sources. That can be Google search keywords, that can be UTM tag traffic, or any third party traffic source that you have. And so now, with this full understanding of your your traffic funnel, so from the user who comes to the Play Store listing, to the installer, the purchaser, to the repeat purchaser, you have a full understanding of that funnel. But on top of that, you also know where the users come from. This allows you to take action, and you can optimize your store listing. So I want to dig into this a little more, how to optimize your store listing. When you get started initially, it's very important to really think about your icon your app icon, your game icon. This, is, this helps every user to find your app, your game, not only in the Play Store, but also on the phone. And so you can do a couple of things. One recommendation that we have is keep your icon fresh. You can even seasonally adjust it for holidays. The second very important piece is um, your, your title. Think about it. Keep it short, keep it unique. Um, you can see here, actually, a word play, and really keep it unique and special. At the same time, be thoughtful about your brand. You may actually have a version 2. You may have a second app at a later stage. Make sure that you are thoughtful about your brand. And then thirdly, it's really important to also think about your description. There are a couple of things to keep in mind. Keep it short, keep it simple, but also have bullet points there. And there is one important thing, whenever you write your app description, also make sure to check it out on your phone to see the app description if everything is above the fold that you really want to communicate. And so that brings me to store listing experiments. Store listing experiments is a product that we launched to really help you getting a better understanding of the performance of your store listing. So that allows you to understand how many conversions do you actually get from the users who visit your store listing. And so you can test for various different parts of the store listing. That can be the title, that can be the description, that can be all the graphic assets that you have on your store listing. And so how does that work? So we recommend that you start with the icon. Our tests show, showed that you actually will see the most impact on the icon. So test early and make it your first thing that you really, really want to test out. And so I have a 
So there are a couple of other best practices here that we really want to share with you. Start with an idea in mind, some hypothesis that you want to test for. Only test one thing at one time to make sure that you can trust your results and you know what drove the, what drove the impact. Then also iterate and learn from that. And then also make sure that the test that you run is actually statistically significant. Whenever you do so, there is also actually a banner within the developer console that shows you as soon as the test is significant and you can move on and be sure that you can trust the results. And then the great thing about this whole feature and this whole product is that this is all free. There is not even code needed for it. We have a couple of examples here. The first I want to show you is Congregate. They saw a 91% increase in installs just by testing the icon. That's pretty amazing. 91% from the first control to the last that you can see here, that's the variant C, a 91% increase in installs. Here is another example. Rovio tested three rounds. So they started the first part and then they figured out, oh, this is actually a good result. They continued a second round, a third round, and then they really understood which icon is actually the best for their game. Here we have another example. Dots, one of our partners that we work with closely, they tested a very small thing. That's really just a screenshot on a store listing of the game. The one thing they modified is actually showing now gameplay within that screenshot instead of just showing the screenshot. And that little tweak actually increased the conversion rate by 6%. I will now hand over to Brian, who will talk to you about alpha beta testing. It's too bad I will not have a clicker. But alas, thanks a lot, Andreas. How cool is that, right? Store listing experiments, free user testing. Put some different icons, put some different descriptions, figure out what's converting best for your users. So now that you have that solid Play Store listing, I kind of want to back up a little uh, and talk about you know, some of the best practices related to actually releasing your app. So what Google Developer Console provides is an easy way for you to prototype, iterate, test, and then eventually launch your app with alpha, beta testing, and staged rollouts. So this is one of the top reasons that developers tell us Play is such a fantastic platform to develop it for. This is a unique tool. It's going to let you get high quality results and really take control of your app rollouts. And we see most of our successful developers using these features. So you're going to start with an alpha test, upload that APK, set it to the channel, move on to beta testing. And then once you're convinced that that package, that new release that you have is good, we can do staged rollouts, releasing that APK to only a percentage of your developers before moving on to your full rollout. And we got that stat up there, right? 80% of the most successful apps of play are using these staged rollouts and alpha and beta testing. So beta testing, very awesome feature on Google Play. You can distribute your app to only a subset of users and get their feedback rather than releasing it to everyone at once and then you know, crossing your fingers and hoping you're not crashing on some random device. So beta testing, users are going to opt in to be testing. They can't leave reviews. And then they're not, you know, not going to be able to leak confidential features or something by, by posting something on your page. Um, you're going to be able to have two different versions that you can beta test with. Um, and you know, if you haven't ever launched on Play yet, we definitely recommend that you're starting out with using beta testing. So you can get the app out there, make sure that things are working out right, again, before you move on to that full rollout. And then if your app's already live, you can test new features in the beta channel. Put the new, put the new APK up there, upload it, release it out to a subset of those users, good to go. This is what the beta testing tab looks like within the developer console. You see you got the production one on the left, beta testing and then alpha testing, and just upload something to that alpha testing or beta testing channel, you're just going to click on that upload new APK button right there. So two ways that we can go about testing our new build, open or closed. Closed alpha or beta testing is invite only and managed through Google Groups. No more of the G plus communities if that was something that was irking you. So this means all you have to do is add an email address to the group and then send your users that link. They can download the alpha and beta builds. 
Now, the other way you can do it is actually have an open alpha or open beta test. This is going to give you a custom URL that you can then send out to as many users as you want. If you want to tweet it to some people, if you want to send it out maybe a, an email list that you have for your power users or subscribers. Um, so you know, a number of top developers have seen a lot of great success, starting with maybe the closed testing, moving over to the open testing now. Throwing up an example, quick case study for you guys to help convince you that this is an awesome way to go. This is The Guardian, great newspaper out of the UK. Over the past, there's like a six month period, and they trialed every one of their new features. First in the beta channel, they uploaded the new nightly builds to the alpha channel, and then eventually pushed out uh, to the public. Beyond, and so beyond, you know, just beyond getting the feedback, it's a safe place for them to test, innovate, and experiment without any danger to the brand. No one who's seeing the live version is not expecting any, you know, oh, it's crashing, there's too many bugs. Everything is only in that beta channel. And again, everything's opt-in as well. So these users are seeing the link, they're clicking become a tester, and that's how they're getting access to those new builds. For The Guardian, it used to take about a month or so to launch new features. Uh, you know, now it's down to just even, even a week or two, and they're able to push some of these things out. So now that you have a beta build that you're confident with, maybe you started with alpha, you moved to the beta channel, tried some in the open beta testing, maybe you had the closed beta testing at first to work out any new bugs or kinks, now it's actually time to push to production. Even, th even then though, we can still only distribute that to a subset of users to keep on testing, keep on iterating, and make sure that everything's gonna be good to go. So this is staged rollouts. You can roll out that new APK to a controlled percentage of users. These users are selected randomly. They won't know what build they're getting when they go to the Play Store, but you're gonna have access to detailed logs, crash reports, analytics. You're gonna be able to see which is happening depending on which version of the APK that people got. All you gotta do, click Upload New APK to Production, and then you're gonna see that staged rollout screen with these percentages, right? 5%, 10%, 20%, and then up to 100% for full rollout. After you upload it, you're gonna look at the crash reports, you're looking at bugs, features, user feedback. You're gonna be able to iterate even then. If you want to take a new APK, bump that up, and then publish that out to other people, you're going to be, have the ability to do that too. And then eventually, once you're confident in that build, you've gone through the testing process, you've done a staged rollout, you can hit 100% and fully push that build out to production for everyone to get. So cool, come on, alpha beta testing. Yeah, there we go, wake it up in here. I know, I, I barely got to finish my coffee this morning too, it's all right. So we got a great build live, but now I want to talk real quick about some of the intricacies of developing for those users in international markets. Localization of your APK and also your Play Store listing is going to be really key to you guys to make sure your app's successful no matter where your users are located. Google Play, as you know, massive reach, truly a global platform. You're going to be getting users from all over. And once you have a good sense that your app is working, your app is seeing downloads, you want to make sure that we can achieve your goals by really reaching users in all these different countries. So the first thing to think about once you want to go international is making sure that your people can actually understand your app, understand your listing. And so we want to talk about localization, right? You can localize the strings within your APK. You can localize your screenshots, your Play Store listings. Um, as a quick incentive, quick plug, if you come to the Google Play office hours later and you are interested in localization, I have some coupons that I can give you, and I'll walk through how you can actually use the localization services provided within the Play Developer Console as well. Localization, making sure that your app is translated. Two, pricing for local markets. Cool thing that we just rolled out with Google Play, sub-dollar pricing. So this is gonna let you have very, very low prices depending on what currency you want, depending on what region you wanna have your app published in. And then three, right, app performance. If your app is being launched in, in you know, different markets, we might have to optimize for smaller download sizes, your ability to work on data connections that aren't as strong, low memory use, right, the devices that people have access to in some of these different areas. You wanna make sure that we're, we're really thinking about these things as we're developing our app. I just told you some, some high level general tips. How can you guys find specific tips out though for your apps? Good news, within the optimization tips section of the developer console, you'll see we now have a lot of awesome localization tips. So, 
Here's an example on my to-do list, right? Translate my product descriptions, add localized graphics, translate strings in my APK. You're gonna find all of these tips right within your developer console now, so you can take action on them and make sure that your APK and your app is good to go, regardless of where the users are who are downloading it. What I just talked about, that first option, translating your Play Store listing, translating your APK, super easy from within the developer console now. After you just hit that store listing, manage translations, you can add your own translation text, or you can purchase translations for your Google Play store listing. If you don't provide translation text, Google Play is gonna either show an automated translation or the default language for your application. And if you think about that, neither are really ideal. If you have a user who speaks another language, who's visiting your app, visiting your Play Store listing, and wants to download your app. So highly recommend either adding your own translation text for your Play Store listing, or you can purchase that directly from the developer console. In addition to your store listing, as I said, want to make sure that your APK itself, the strings within it, are good to go as well, regardless of where your users are. Google makes this super easy using the APK translation service. You can either purchase those strings again and purchase those translations from the developer console, or you can add those yourself. So to get there, within the Dev Console, right at the bottom, you're gonna hit Start or Check Progress under the APK translation service, upload your XML file, select your target language, and I'll go into real quick what that next screen looks like in terms of actually purchasing translated text and translation options if you wanna do that. Um, so you're gonna be presented with a list of third-party vendors who are pre-qualified by Google to offer high-quality translations at competitive prices. You can upload the strings that you want, select the language to translate into, and then choose your translation vendor based off price and time. Once you've purchased translations, you get an email from that vendor, um, and then the lawyers make me say, the translations are an independent business agreement between you and your vendor. You'll need to work with your vendor directly to manage any translation process and deliverables. Thanks, guys. However, all built right within the developer console. You're going to be able to see the progress, perhaps for call by foot. It's going to be, it's, it's great. Really good feature. Come on, slides. Awesome. So last thing I wanted to go over today, something called developer pages. Um, this is a new, relatively new feature that we just launched, and this is going to let you have a branded presence on the Google Play Store. If you think about it, when you actually click on the developer name or the, the title of an app, you're gonna, you see that page that just has a bunch of apps that that developer makes. This is going to let you transform that sort of generic page into something that's awesome and is really representative of your brand. Developer pages let you upload a graphic, explain what your company is all about, and even pick a special app to feature at the top. The developer page is gonna give you a single destination to promote all of your apps on Google Play. And many of our top partners, one in four in fact, have already created their page. You can check out AnyDo right here. So they have that nice banner at the top with some promotional text, graphics on top of that. You can see an icon for the developer, explanation, and they have that featured app. Easy to show off your brand and cross promote your apps with Google Play developer pages. That was it on mobile. Uh, and I know you guys, mobile first, tablet first, but developer pages also look great on desktop browsers. Um, so this is Yidio, really cool app if you're a cord cutter and want to see the, uh, you know, where the, the different shows are on right now. This is what the developer page looks like on desktop, though. Again, featured app there, awesome graphic banner at the top, some descriptions and things like that. So, super tactfully, how do we actually build a developer page? Um, and if we want to get interactive, I see a lot of you with your laptops out. Feel free to fire up your developer consoles right now. So literally take five minutes. We can walk through it together. On the left side, click Settings, Developer Page. Add your information to the top, right? So we'll start out in English. Put your promotional text on there. This can be up to 140 characters. No, nothing else is 140 characters that I'm thinking about. So this is, this is perfect right up here. You can add a translation if you want. Uh, and then, again, stick your uh, uh, company website up there, too. You'll need a developer icon and a large header image at the top. And then, again, as an optional feature, you can also add a featured app. So if someone's visiting your developer page, they're going to see that app there at the top. You can also have your other apps listed at the bottom. If you have a promotion or a seasonal special, you can rotate that featured app at the top of your screen out. I see everyone really clicking and intensely typing, so I'm going to assume you're all building developer pages with me right now. It's good. 
So that's actually all I had to go over. A couple things, little housekeeping items. So first off, as Andreas and I mentioned, we work on the business development team of Play. If you guys are interested in working with us, two links up there at the top, g.co play apps. If you're an app developer, g.co slash play games BD. If you're a games developer, that'll take you to a form. You can fill that out, let us know your thoughts, let us know your priorities, tell us about your app a bit, and you can get back to us. Give us feedback. If you liked hearing me up here ramble on about some things, if you didn't like it, if you thought Andreas is way better than me, which I tend to, give us feedback. That's the forms link right there. And then as I mentioned before, we're going to be having office hours. So if you have questions about play, if you have questions about the developer console, feel free to stop by. As I mentioned, we'll have coupons for translation services. So you can use some of those cool tools we're talking about. And Google also just released a new Secrets to App Success book. So if you want to swing by our office hours, we'll hopefully hook you up with one of these. Lots of great content, and each of the topics that we covered today is also in this book in a lot more detail. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. I think we probably have maybe 15 minutes or so for some questions, or we can walk around and talk to you guys, too. So I have a few questions. Uh, so you said icon of the app is the most um, significant impact you can do, right, uh, quickly. And no coding involved. That's, I'm assuming you don't change the app, you don't change the icon in the app itself, only on the store. Is that something you, you, that you do, or? So you would modify the, the app icon. Obviously, that makes the most sense if you test it actually at a very early stage of development. Um, and so that's when you actually want to test for the icon. Um, and so you test it both on a store but also for the app itself. I guess what I'm getting at, if I have a different icon in my app, right, I, wanna, I don't want to redeploy my app just to change the icon, so I would change it on the Play Store, but then the app itself has a different icon. Is that something that's okay, you think, or? Um, I believe it's better if you keep it consistent because okay. it's kind of like your brand also, but it's, it's it's also where any user would find your app again, either on a phone, but also on the Play Store. So you want to make sure that it's kind of consistent. Okay. But clearly, when it's actually at an early stage, you can easily test for it. And then you can actually test various different iterations without having to update the app. So if that is at an early stage, I think that's totally fine. But generally, make sure to keep it consistent as well. OK, that means if I want to change the icon for the holidays, I would need to deploy a new APK just to change the icon and have it. Um, so within the developer console, you don't have to actually modify or adjust the APK. So that's just a change within the developer console. OK. So if I may, a couple more questions. Um, do you expand the number of languages uh, for your translation services? Because I used to have to use them. And then we would decide to support some Nordic languages, like Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, so on. And they were not available. So I had to switch to different service. Hmm. So is that something that you guys keep changing? I haven't checked for like a few months, but is it something that you're expanding constantly or like you kind of know? Yeah, I, I would check again. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of languages that are covered right now. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the specific yeah, ones. Okay. Um, but again, because uh, at least if you're purchasing the translations through Google, it's those third party vendors, you should be able to find someone out there who's been vetted by Google who's going to be able to translate into that language that you want. OK. Uh, also, you mentioned that uh, if you don't translate, the store description is shown either in default language or auto-translated. Do we have any control over that, or it's like automatic user setting? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if there's any specific control that you have over saying which it is. Um, you know, the user will have their default language, and then, I mean, if, if you go on the Play Store on desktop, right, there's that little thing that pops us, do you want Google to translate this, and then they can click it. So, I mean, I guess there's sort of some control if the user clicks that or not, but, I mean, I'd say, you know, best practice is probably just to have a translation in there for whatever language the user's in. OK, and the last question is um, developer page. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any data on the impact that it makes? Is it a worthy investment? Like, should I just go do it right now? Mm -hmm. Do you have any, like, anything? Yep, so uh, nothing specific that uh, we, we were going to share yet. But you know, right now, it's just a really cool way to promote your brand. Um, you know, you, when you, you saw it on desktop, you saw it on mobile. Uh, if people are cross-clicking between your apps, it's a good way that you can show the different, your, your featured app or some of the other apps that you have. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure at some point that you know we'll, we'll release some information on that. 
Okay, so I'm guessing for a single app, if the developer has just one app, maybe it's not as valuable, but I can clearly see if you have multiples, that's a way to promote. If, I mean, even if you only have one app, though, you can still pin it to the top and have that as sort of your mini featured app. So I think okay. it can still be a strong Thank way you. to promote your brand. Also, the cost is actually very low, right? Like, it's, a, it's something that takes you a minute. And at the same time, like, there is no cost associated with it itself. So it's, pre it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to set up. Uh, great talk. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I have a question related to stage rollout. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit more? about uh, selection of uh, new and upgrading users, about uh, upgrading for the same percentage of users? Uh, so it, once you have pushed? Uh, yeah, for example, we released it like for 10%, mm -hmm. and we found some critical issues in it. Mm -hmm. And we roll out the uh, new uh, APK for the same percentage. Yep. Uh, what will happen? Yeah, so it gets a little tricky there. Um, so you know, we, we can we can sync real quick afterwards, and I can show you. There's a nice support page actually in the in the yeah, developer sure. page that says, yeah. So you roll it out to point ten percent or something. If you find an issue and you want to update it, you know, how do you get that that update to go to the ten percent? If you want to keep iterating or something. So let's let me let me come over there afterwards, and I'll show you the page. Um, I, I believe so, because uh, again, we don't want, you know, we don't want to push 10 and you have issues with it, then you're going to push it to another 10% or something. So yeah, that's the point of sort of the staged rollout concept. But again, uh, I'll show you guys the actual page where it outlines very, very specifically how you can do that. Uh, actually, we're quite familiar with this page. Oh, and the question is uh, <laughs> exactly uh, that was mentioned. Uh, will this, uh, the same 10% of users receive the update? I, I believe so, yes. Um, but if it doesn't say so specifically on the, the, that one stage rollout bit, uh, that I'm not sure off the top of my head, but let, let's follow up. I want to get you that answer. And another part, uh, what is the percentage between new and upgrading users when we uh, roll out it to the same 10%? Will it be like 5% of uh, new users and 5% of upgrading, upgrading users or something different? In terms of who gets pushed that? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there's any specifics. I think it's, it's pretty, pretty arbitrary intentionally. That you're just, it just pushes it to a subset of your user base out there. So there is no guarantee that uh, there will be any new users or any updated users? I, I don't believe so, but again, we can follow up on that. Sorry, there's kind of specific questions about it, but yeah, let's find yeah, out. Yeah, sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, uh, thanks. Uh, I have a few questions. Um, I'll just uh, do them all at the same time so you can respond uh, in whatever order you see fit. <laughs> sure. uh, one is, um, do you have any um, recommended strategies for uh, dealing with uh, sort of irrelevant uh, user reviews? Mm -hmm. So for example, um, uh, I work on an app that you know, uh, basically you can uh, by digital content on, and uh, people are sometimes uh, disappointed to realize that they actually have to pay for some uh, for the content, and they leave uh, negative reviews uh, 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 because of that disappointment. They give one star reviews, um, and it doesn't really, you know, it's not a fair review of our app because um, you know we don't advertise that we, like you know, we're giving away anything for free. Um, so that's one issue. Um, so uh, I, I can I, take that real quick. Sure. So one of the cool things within the developer console is you can actually respond to user reviews. So that's something that we definitely would recommend that developers do. So if you get a one-star review, particularly if it's something where you know, the user should have known they had to pay for something or there's an issue like that, you can respond to that user review and it's going to show up right below that. Right. I mean, we're, yeah, we're definitely aware of that and we've, we've tried that with a very, mm -hmm. very limited request. I mean, you know, um, just you know, most users at that point don't care enough to update the review or, you know, they're, they're still not happy with like you know what it still doesn't meet their expectations. So um, that that's one thing that um, you know I don't really have a suggestion for like how to improve, but some sort of uh, you know like having some sort of criteria. I like I, that, so for example that the helpful reviews section uh, sort of sorting theoretically could help, but in in like we've noticed on our app that it doesn't. Like some of those reviews are actually ranked up, t uh, up high uh, on the helpful, uh, when it's sorted by helpfulness. So that's one thing if like the helpfulness could be 
uh, improved, uh, that, that could actually help. Um, at least, not may maybe with the average score, but with the, um, with the order of reviews. So, so one, of the, one of the things that some developers do, if when you're responding to a review that's particularly negative, say, hey, go ahead and contact us at support at brianzapp.com or something. And then you have a sort of different form that you can try to resolve the issue. And then maybe that could incentivize them to go back later and actually, uh, you know, actually update the review, update the star that they put there. Okay. You, can then, also, um, you can also really try and test various different descriptions around it to be very explicit about like, what your app is all about so that users, before they download it, really get a good understanding about like, what the app is all about, so, and you can test various different descriptions as well. So that goes actually to my next question. Is there any way, it would be, I don't, there might be a way I'm not, I'm not aware of it. Um, is there, uh, it would be cool if we could see um, the, uh, the stats for how many times, um, and if users actually expand the description, because the description as you see it normally is just like two lines, um, and then the, you, know, you can't really fit much in there. So it'd be interesting to see like how many of those users are actually reading the description because I would suspect that you know most don't. I mean, I, I typically never do myself. Um, so that's that's one thing. Um, that the the show more or whatever with the, yeah. the tab there. Yeah. yeah. So we don't have any stats around it, but it's definitely something. Anything that you think is really really important to communicate to your users, make sure to have it above default so that most of the users actually see it or all of the users see it. There's definitely a break off as soon as you actually have to expand. Okay. And, um, and uh, with beta testing, um, again, I have very limited experience, but I was, um, uh, as far as I, I understand, there, um, well, basically, I, I sort of felt like it would be nice if there were more avenues to uh, get input from the beta testers. For example, you know, if, if I'm like, you know, uh, if I don't have access to a lot of devices and I'm using my beta testers to say, okay, like you, like okay, like you have a Samsung device, you have a LG device, and you know one of these uh, devices like ha has a problem, a an easier way for that user to be able to submit either screenshots or like screen screen recording or something like that uh, to me, so I can you know see what the issue is and like it might not be a crash, just like it might be a layout issue or something like mm -hmm. that. So um, that would be really helpful. So uh, more avenues of sort of communication and uh, data collection, of course, with the user's uh, approval um, in each individual case uh, for beta testers. Uh, so there is one way that you can do that. So for beta testing, you can actually now not only use the group, but you can also actually create a link. And that link can be distributed through whatever channel you want to. And so if you start a campaign, and that could be, for example, an AdWords campaign where you can target a specific device. Then you can push out um, your beta APK to a couple of users. They are all on that specific device, which allows you to learn much more about users for the specific device. That's one way to do it, and you can choose whichever channel you use to push it out. But one way that I'm familiar with is actually if you use AdWords and uh, you just target specifically users that have this specific device, and you'll get feedback from them. Right, right. I'm talking about the next step, where it's like if one of those devices has a specific issue, for example, a layout issue, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'd be nice if uh, I could, the, the user could uh, submit, you know, a screenshot or um, a screen recording um, of that issue uh, more easily. Like right now, I would have to communicate with that user, ask them, hey, like, here are the steps, do this, to, like, your, record your screen, if you, like, please. And then you know if they're nice enough, they might do. If they're nice enough and like savvy enough to do it, uh, they might. But a uh, more streamlined experience mm -hmm. for the beta uh, testers themselves would uh, would really be would be helpful. Yeah. I mean, you can always have feedback me mechanism built within your app, right? So a lot of Google apps shake to give feedback, or you can click a click a menu option, and send feedback, something like that. If you're doing closed beta, right, you have access to that Google group, so you can always work out some type of communication methods around there. But uh, yeah, definitely hear your feedback though. Okay. And uh, is there any mechanism to provide? Um, Rewards for beta testers, like if you know, if someone was a beta tester and they submitted an issue, like you want to, like you know, give them a paid version, gamified of the app or something, or something yeah. like that. Is there a mechanism for that right now? Uh, I, I don't think built in within the developer console, the alpha and beta channels, there is, but okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, what is your appreciation for prompting in-app uh, feedbacks, like? prompting and have the user to give us some feedback in the Prey Store. Does that work? Is it recommended? Is it frowned upon? What are your thoughts? Uh, what do you mean, the, the in-app? No, 
know, a lot of apps pop up a dialogue asking you if you want to rate them now, oh, later, oh, or, now or later. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head if I have, oh, there we go, screensaver. If I have any particular uh, best practice or anything around that, um, I, yeah, I can say. Know, if yeah. it works or not. If it works or you're. It's or, annoying yeah. or something. <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly find it annoying at some spots. Uh, me personally. I'm, I'm not sure if we have any best practices around when you should ask uh, for a rating or when you should ask for feedback, but you know, I would say just you know, figure out which you, when a user is going to be most likely to you know, click on that call to action and not find it annoying. Um, so you know, probably someone who's already engaged with your app, probably someone who you know, has, has spent a certain amount of time there and maybe given you a rating or, or maybe giving you a rating on a previous version or something. I think there's definitely some different signals that you could use to figure out who you should prompt with that rather than just sort of spam everybody with it. Hey guys, um, have you had any experience with people having negative feedback from a developer standpoint in alpha beta and wanting to roll back to a production and not being able to do so? Like, say for instance, adding a certain feature in a manifest or raising target SDK and having that be bumped and then not being able to take a step backwards? That's tough. Again, I, I, I'm, I'd, I'd say let's, let's meet afterwards and we can look at, again, the specifics of when you roll a feature out, when you roll it back, when you're pushing to a certain percentage and pushing back, because I don't want to give any misinformation. But you know, the, the whole point, though, is right? you're going to be able to push it out to a certain set of users. You're going to be able to iterate and launch. Yep. And I suppose you could always just, if you have a previous version you want to roll back to, right? maybe push that one out instead. But again, let, let's, let's sync afterwards instead of me trying to tell you off the top of my head. Um, have you guys seen any successful strategies for managing paid upgrades in apps? And are you guys working on anything to make that easier for developers? What's the question? If we have seen any uh, successful premium apps? Uh, no, uh, uh, good strategies for handling upgrades or paid upgrades or updates. Sorry. Yeah, you do a 2.0 and be able to charge for it. Um, have you seen anyone? Six uh, have any patterns that are successful for that? And are you guys thinking about it or have any ideas towards that? Um, yeah, definitely. There are a couple of examples out there. I'd really just look at like apps or games that are, um, that are doing this successfully. I don't want to actually point one or the other that is actually of the partners that we work with point out here. But we can think definitely later on. It's also good practice to kind of like, if you have the same app, right? Like always think about, is it hard to get your users from app A to app B? In many cases, it's probably better to actually keep your users in there and offer additional content and potentially upsell your content in there. Uh, there can be a break off if you actually want to push your users to another app. But we can talk about this in detail later on in the office hour if you want to. Hey guys, I really love the new you know, user acquisition capability within the developer console, but I feel there's a bit of a feature gap right now um, where you can't really see a lot of visibility into what's happening organically within the store itself. So you can certainly track things that happen outside the store, like a, an ad campaign, um, but you don't understand what the organic traffic is comprised of. So what keywords are people searching for, which promotional positions are driving traffic, and so on and so forth. So that'd be a, a great feature request. Yeah, totally. So at this point, you can see um, your keyword searches, you can see UTM tra tag traffic, so that allows you to get an understanding of your third party traffic, but um, you cannot dig into all of the details, and so definitely take that feedback, and that's something that we are actively working on. Thank you. Hi. Um, I know that you guys have a lot of statistics on like crashes and that sort of thing, um, and particularly looking at the user reviews in the developer console. But as far as I've noticed, there's no way to like export them to like a CSV or something like that. Is that something that's coming? Is that there? And I just am blind. 
Um, there's, there's nothing that I can share specifically about an export uh, functionality, but definitely re the reporting that you can see for uh, reviews, um, you see actually quite a lot of uh, iterations there and actually updates, so stay tuned on this. Thanks. Uh, quick question. Um, you talked about optimizing prices for different local markets. Do you have any guidance on specifics for doing that? You know, if I've got a, a 99 cent app here in the States, what do I do with that in 100 other countries? Yeah. I mean, so, so some devs, you know, with the new sub dollar pricing options are testing out a lot of different. Uh, you know, a lot of different pricing options. You have the option, I believe, within the developer console to use the currency converter, right? So you can click real quick, and then depending on whatever the day's exchange rates are, it's going to try to figure out the pricing for the different markets. Um, yeah, it's still kind of early days with some of this. Uh, so, you know, I think there are a couple sort of high-level tips and strategies. And uh, again, not to plug office hours, but I think we have about two seconds left. So, yeah, if you want to swing by, you know, Lots of good stuff also in the app success book that we can give you that covers some of the international markets, different monetization strategies, and uh, some of the stuff you can do with the sub-dollar pricing. What are your office hours? I believe they start at 1.15 today. Um, the location, that's a good question, though. I think, not here? In yeah. here. In here. In here. I'll be wearing no. the same shirt, I promise. Uh, actually, office hours are out in front of Grand Hall. OK. There we go. Cool. Uh, I think other people are coming in here kicking us out. So thank you. Yay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>